Greetings, everyone. Hope all of you are having an absolutely fantastic day. Let me give you a spoiler warning right up front. This Blade of the Frontiers melee warlock build is for late game Will, and depending on your choices, he could go through a significant physical change. I only have one BG3 playthrough, so there's no way for me to show you a build of him without also showing that change. I will not go into any details about who did that to him or why it happened, but you will see it, so if that's too much of a spoiler, this video isn't for you. Otherwise, let's dive into the build. If you are curious about warlock mechanics I don't cover, there's a link in the description to my video walking through all warlock has to offer. Unlike the other origins you can play as, Will is known as a hero throughout the Sword Coast, so you'll oftentimes get dialogue from people who are shocked to meet him or happy he is there to help. He's a human, which is a very common race in BG3, so you won't get as much special reactivity as a Dragonborn or Gith Yankee, but there's still plenty of it. Like most characters, Will has a base movement speed of 9 meters. Since he's a human, he also gets Civil Militia, which provides him with several weapon proficiencies, but this is irrelevant to Will because as a warlock, he'll make a pack with a blade that'll automatically make him proficient with whatever weapon he's holding. You'll also gain proficiency with light armor and shields, which is very important and and helps make you more defensive. Will's final race features human versatility and it lets you gain proficiency in one additional skill which is quite valuable. Your carrying capacity is increased by a quarter which is also useful because there's a ton of loot to manage in this game. Will's class is Warlock and it provides him with proficiency in simple weapons and light armor. You already get light armor proficiency from being a human and weapon proficiencies don't matter so this does nothing for you. You also get Warlock spell slots. This differs from spell slots of other spell casters in that they are regained by taking a short rest instead of requiring a long rest and they are always at your highest level. The drawback is at most levels Warlock only has two spell slots so as opposed to a class like Sorcerer which will give you multiple slots across all spell levels, Warlock will only provide you with two until level 10 when you get a third. Consequently, once a few of Warlock's cool mechanics have been gained, I prefer to multi-class out of it. At level 1 you can select two cantrips and the first one you should take is Eldritch Blast which does 1d10 force damage to a single target. You will get additional blasts at characters level 5 and 10. This means you do not have to stay as a warlock in order to make this cantrip more powerful. I would also pick up Friends since it will give you advantage on charisma checks. Advantage allows you to roll two dice and take the better result. As you will see later this class is a great option to handle persuasion checks so Friends is a nice pickup. Warlocks choose their subclass at level one and will automatically comes with fiend which gives you dark one's blessing every time you down an enemy you'll gain temporary hit points equal to your level plus your charisma modifier this is a damage focused build so that feature helps make you more tanky at level 1 you'll be able to choose 2 spells and the first I'd recommend is Hex. Anytime you damage an enemy, you'll deal an additional 1d6 necrotic damage. If a hexed enemy dies, you can apply Hex on another enemy as a bonus action without expending a spell slot as long as you can maintain concentration. This spell is critical to maximizing our damage. I would also pick up Armor of Agathis, which is triggered when an enemy hits you and provides 5 temporary hit points along with dealing 5 cold damage. When you upcast this spell, these numbers increase, so at spell level 3, you'll gain 15 hit points and deal 15 damage. This is a fantastic way to punish enemies who hit you, and it lasts until you take a long rest. Will comes with the folk hero background, and this cannot be changed even if you respect his character. This means he will gain inspiration when you do especially heroic acts, and you can spend that inspiration to re-roll failed dialogue checks. This background also provides him with the animal handling and survival skills, both of which scale off of wisdom and it's doubtful you'll be graded either one. Looking through the abilities, strength and intelligence are irrelevant so they can be dumped. Getting into a pack with a devil isn't too bright, so I feel this is consistent with Will's personality. Dexterity will give you more armor class and initiative, so I put this at 14. Constitution is a big part of this build as it helps you maintain concentration, so we give it 16 points. Wisdom doesn't help us offensively, but defensively it protects Will from a lot of nasty crowd control spells, so leave it at 10. Finally, Charisma is our primary ability, so it will help our attack and damage in addition to bolstering Will's dialogue checks. You can select three skill proficiencies, and I take Persuasion, Intimidation, and Deception. No matter what kind of conversation it is, Will has it covered. At level 2, you'll gain one Warlock spell slot, bringing your total number to 2. You'll also get to choose another spell, and I take Burning Hands to punish enemies who get too close. 
Level 2 also allows Will to select two Eldritch Invocations, which are features that give him additional functionality. Agonizing Blast adds your Charisma modifier to the damage of your Eldritch Blast. It's important to note that as you level up, the additional Blast that Cantrip gets will calculate their damage separately. Therefore, your Charisma bonus here and the 1d6 bonus from Hex will be added to each separate Blast you can do, and by level 10 you'll fire all three of them with just one spell cast. That's bananas, and ensures we could deal a ton of damage even from afar. We'll also pick up Repelling Blast, which causes your Eldritch Blast to push enemies back 4.5 meters. Very useful when they are high up and can be pushed to their depths. At spell level 3, you get access to level 2 spells, and I would take Mirror Image. This will create 3 duplicates of yourself that each increase your armor class by 3. When you successfully evade an attack, one of the duplicates vanishes. Prior to this level, you will focus on ranged combat, but now we'll finally start fighting in melee. Unfortunately, we still only have light armor, so this will provide a little more protection during difficult encounters. Next, you get to select your pack, and you're definitely going to want to take Pact of the Blade. This will let you bind any weapon in your main hand, causing its attack and damage to scale off your charisma instead of strength or dexterity. You automatically gain proficiency with whatever weapon you bind. There's also a summoning option, but you should ignore it, since the summoning weapon is bland compared to what you find out in the field. Now you have everything you need to start properly engaging enemies in melee. At level 4 you get another cantrip, and I like Mage Hand, since it can be used to pull far away levers or loot items, and sometimes enemies will attack it instead of you. You also get a spell, and I would take Misty Step, which allows you to teleport anywhere within 18 meters, which is very handy regardless of your playstyle. You can also select a feat, and I would take Ability Improvement to sink 2 points into Charisma. At the end of this video, I'll go over the late game items I'm using on Will, and we'll talk about this choice more. At level 5, you get an extra attack with your bound weapon. At this time, this extra attack will stack with another extra attack that you get from a different class at level 5. In my mind, that should not be the case, and it seems like something Larian is probably going to patch out, but maybe it's meant to be that way, and if so, hey, that just makes this build even more awesome. You also get to select a level 3 spell, and I would take Counter Spell, which gives you a reaction allowing you to nullify an enemy spell. You'll also get an Invocation, and I would take Devil's Sight, which allows you to see through magical and non-magical darkness to a range of 24 meters. Enemies love using darkness against you, especially in Act 2, so this will be very useful. This also makes it useful to cast darkness directly on Will, debilitating enemies but having no effect on him. We have now received everything that Warlock has to offer for this build, so let's switch over for one dip into Cleric. I am going to use this build for an Evil Will run, and I like the idea of giving him the War Domain. This will provide heavy armor proficiency and let him spend a War Priest charge to make an additional melee attack as a bonus action. Fantastic stuff. For Deity, we're going to go with Tiamat. Will feels eternally trapped by Agents of Avernus, and it's heavily contributed to his distorted evil outlook. Tiamat is one of the most powerful beings alive, but anytime she attempts to leave the Nine Hells, she disintegrates and is returned. Will sees a lot of himself in her plight and feels kinship with the Mother of Evil Dragons. You also get to select three cantrips. Thaumatergy will give you advantage on intimidation checks, Guidance will give you a 1d4 bonus on ability checks, and Resistance will provide a 1d4 bonus to saving throws. All of these are great and you should pick them up. You can also take one spell, but remember Cleric spells will scale off Wisdom, not Charisma, so we want a spell that's guaranteed to work. I would take Sanctuary to save party members in a pinch. Finally, we will switch over to Paladin. This class provides Lay on Hands, which is a fantastic heal, and Divine Sense, which can be activated with a bonus action and gives us advantage on attack rolls against Celestials, Fiends, and the Undead, of which there are plenty of in the game. It doesn't really matter what subclass you choose, but since this is for an evil run, will take Oath of Vengeance. At level 2, Paladin gives you Divine Smite, which is a spell that significantly increases your melee attack damage. You also get a Fighting Style, and I would choose Defense, to give you a plus 1 bonus to Armor Class. You get access to a handful of spells, but none of them are noteworthy for this build. Level 3 Paladins gain Immunity to Disease and Vow of Enmity, which gives you advantage on attack rolls against an enemy for 10 turns as a bonus action. Great stuff, and that will help us even more on the next level. 
Level 4 Paladins get a feat and I recommend picking up Great Weapon Master. When you land a critical hit or kill an enemy with a melee weapon, you can make another melee attack as a bonus action. That in and of itself is fantastic, but it also gives you a toggle passive that will apply a negative 5 penalty to your attack in exchange for a plus 10 increase to your damage. This is a fantastic trade off as long as you are diligent about buffing Will to make up for the attack penalty. The best way to do this is to consistently give him advantage against enemies. Attack buffs like Bless also work well. Level 5 Paladins get an extra attack. Again, at this time of the video, Pact of the Blade's extra attack stacks with other classes, but I don't think that's intended. Best to assume Larian will patch that out sometime in the next month. A handful of class spells are added for you, but none of them help the build very much. You also get two oath spells. Whole Monster will paralyze one humanoid enemy, and it's very useful to have. We've already discussed Misty Step. Finally, at level 6, Paladin provides Aura of Protection, which is a bonus to your entire team's saving throws equal to your Charisma modifier. Without question, this is fantastic and makes your whole squad tankier. Now that we have went through the mechanics, let's briefly talk about what party members work well with this build. You excel in single target damage, dialogue checks, and serving as a frontline fighter. You don't excel in picking locks or disarming traps, so having a Starion on the team is very helpful and he meshes perfectly with an evil run. You are also weak when it comes to crowd control and area of effects, so Gale is a great choice for your party. He will get access to spells like Haste, Fireball, and Hypnotic Pattern that will fill in a lot of gaps. I am not certain if it's possible to keep him around during a truly evil run. Finally, you'll be weak in perception and that's a very important skill to uncover traps and hidden details in the game. Shadowheart would definitely help with this as she's great in combat. Jahiro would also be able to assist in this regard, although I don't know if she'll stick around for a pure evil run. Before we dive into combat, I thought some of you might be interested in the late game items I use for Will. If not, there are chapters down below so you can skip to the combat example. Uh, going through this real quick, for my hat, I got a plus two to charisma, so that brings my charisma up to 21, really hoping that somewhere in the world there's another item that will give me a plus one on charisma to even that out to 22. Otherwise, um, it might not make sense to put two points into Charisma and maybe our distribution of points at the very beginning of this build should change a little bit, but not completely sure. I, I'm not going to say that I've explored the game thoroughly enough to say that I know where what all the items are that are in it currently. Um, I got a Cloak of Displacement, which at the beginning of my turn, uh, the Cloak activates and grants enemies disadvantage on attack rolls against me until I take damage. So obviously this makes me more tanky. I'm wearing heavy armor, which gives me an 18 armor class. I can't be frightened. And um, I gain a plus one to intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. And of course I have disadvantage on stealth checks. So overall my AC is 21. So I think on my other build is 22, so a little bit less, but still very, very respectable. Uh, you can absolutely get through the game uh, with this AC. Uh, I'm using the gloves of thievery. Obviously, if I went through this whole game uh, with a melee centric build, I would probably have gloves that would be more centered around during more melee damage. Uh, the boots allow me to use Misty Step uh, one time without spending a spell slot, and it ensures that I can't be enwebbed, entangled, or ensnared, and I can't slip on grease or ice so all very nice uh, my necklace allows me to replenish uh, spell slots uh, once per um, long rest and so it's very useful because you can use it uh, one time for each um, spell level so spell level one spell level two spell level three um, my ring gives me an additional two acid damage to weapon attacks so it lets me do a little bit more melee damage and then the other ring whenever I kill a creature my next attack roll will be a critical hit and once spent this effect refreshes after long rest very very nice I almost never use the bow but um, it does grant me resistance to fire and cold damage and even more importantly it lets me cast haste without having to burn a spell slot 
Haste, of course, gives you an additional action, so it's very useful to have. And then finally, my melee uh, weapon is a Halberd of Vigilance. So this gives me a plus one bonus to initiative rolls and advantage on perception ability checks. And when I make an attack roll as a reaction, I can make it with advantage. So I make people uh, pay when I use opportunity attacks. Very nice stuff. And it is a plus two weapon. I, I don't think I've ever seen any plus three weapons in the game. They might be out there, but I think plus two is as good as it's going to get. All right, so now we're in a combat example. One thing I forgot to mention, um, when it comes to binding your weapon, you need to do it after every uh, long rest. And so you want to be careful about that. So when I was going through the items, I don't think I had it bound yet. And so its stats probably didn't look right. But now you'll see it has the proper increases to attack and damage from my charisma. Okay, so now this character is in front of me. I'm going to go ahead and use a smite. This is just my regular attack. We'll beef it up some. And I got a 70% chance to hit. Awesome. And all right, so it looks like I did around, let's see. Um, this would be around 41, 45. So that was 47 uh, damage overall against the first character. And then I'll move up a little bit. And now, because of my deep impact, I get an extra attack, right? So once again, we'll go ahead and do a smite. And because I just killed an enemy, um, the feat that I took allows me to take a uh, do a critical uh, the next time. So I'll go ahead and do that. And that's a critical hit. So it was, um, let's see, uh, 19, then 29, 31. Uh, so it looks like 33 damage on uh, that second hit now i get to make an extra attack because remember we have one from paladin as well so i'll go ahead and take this and then we'll do another attack and that's a critical miss it happens but now we get yet another attack because we have a bonus action from war priest right so we'll be able to take that so let's go ahead and use that Awesome, and that did 40, so uh, that did 44 damage, right? And now, can we make it over here? Looks like we can, and we have yet another attack because we, we are hastened. So I'll do yet another smite. And unfortunately, I only get 65% chance to hit. Again, that toggle from the feet is, um, that, that passive from the feet, you can toggle it off. So if you feel like you're just not getting enough damage, you could always uh, take it again. But for, take it off rather. For that attack, we ended up doing what? That's 20, that's 40. So we ended up doing yet another 42 damage. And then um, I don't know why the deep impact is giving me two extra attacks instead of one that might be a bug and again i don't feel like the deep impact extra attacks should work with paladin anyway so one or two of these attacks might be taken off but even if that occurs it's still a massive amount of attacks and a massive amount of damage but for the sake of this video we'll go ahead and go with it so hey it's letting us do this all right, so that ended up being 29, so that's 31, so that's 33 damage. And then it's going to give us yet another attack. So we'll finally do one more. And that one miss, it happens. And then finally, that's the full amount of attacks we were able to do for that first round. So of course, I did have haste, uh, which is going to give you one additional action. But uh, even despite this, I was able to do one, two, three, four um what five six so what six attacks in a single turn that's crazy that's crazy so even if uh deep impact is giving you uh one too many attacks and if it doesn't uh stack with paladin that's still four back to back to back melee attacks you can do against an enemy most bosses are not going to be able to stand up to that, especially if you're properly optimized. Again, 
I didn't use Will as a melee character for my playthrough, so I just took a couple of things off of other party members and stuck it onto them for the purpose of this combat example. But if you started the game knowing this is how you wanted to play, you could probably come up with something um, that is going to be even more effective. And that completes my Blade of the Frontiers build. I probably, uh, I'll probably look at Barbarian next, but if there's a particular class you want more information on, just let me know in the comments below. Hope all of you enjoyed this video. Take care.